87%, yeah, that's the percentage of all real estate agents that get in the business today that'll be gone in two years. Let me tell you something, the why is there so much turnover in real estate? Because it isn't easy. And because most people don't know exactly what they need to do to get to the next level. Now look, regardless of whether you're brand new to the industry or, you've, or you're a team leader, you've got 40 people on your team and you just wanna to get to the next level. If you're doing 10 transactions a year, you wanna to get to 25. You're doing 500 transactions a year, you wanna to get to 1,000. You're at 1,000, you wanna to get to 10,000. Let me tell you something, you need the right coach. Why? Because Club Wealth is the only coaching company on the planet that will literally guarantee that you will double your income or make at least an extra $100,000 your first year coaching with us, or we will give you 100% of your investment back. This is for people of all levels. Click the link below, sign up for the appropriate tier level, and let's get you a strategy session today. And I promise you, I 100% guarantee you, promise you that you will walk away with a heart full of gratitude for the time that we took for you because you got so much value out of that call. Schedule your strategy session today. I promise you'll be glad you did. Sign up for a strategy session at clubwealth.com slash strategy session. There she is. It's Coach Virginia Corbett. Coach Virginia Corbett, we are already live on Facebook. So you are live. You've got a massive audience. I don't even know the exact number, but I know we got a bunch of people watching right now. What? Yeah. I didn't know Sharif was going to be here. That's a well, surprise. So I, isn't that awesome? I know. So I just had my Club All TV with, with Coach Sharif. And by the way, you can help me hold him accountable, Coach Virginia. He uh -huh. committed to he's now effective immediately starting this week because it's really easy to do. He's going to start his podcast this week. He's going to do his first recording this week. And every week thereafter, he's going to do one but one one hour video for a podcast and so we you and i need to hold them accountable for that and will you help me with that one one hour video a week for yeah, a podcast? yeah just for a podcast okay and then i mean that's really easy to do right would you yes. would you help me hold them accountable to that i i will I appreciate that. And I can't think of any better way for you to help me hold him accountable to that than for you to do the same thing. And so the question I have for you <laughs> is, will you also do a podcast one hour a week from now on forever? I can absolutely guarantee you I would fail in that crime. <laughs> <laughs> Coach Virginia. Uh -huh. First of all, looked. first of all, I guarantee, watch this. I want everybody in the chat, I want you to tell us, if you would watch a podcast that was hosted by Virginia Corbett, I want you to type in, go, do it, Virginia. Type in, do it, Virginia, in the chat, if you would like to see her do a, a podcast on a weekly basis. I can tell you this right now. I can think of a lot of people that would much rather hear your podcast than mine or Sharif's. No offense, Sharif, but you and I are <laughs> Virginia. I mean, she's Virginia Corbett, after all. I mean, come on. <laughs> Tyree's yeah. like, yep. <laughs> uh, that being said, uh, let me just introduce Coach Virginia really quick. So Virginia Corbett, when when she first came to Club Wealth, was essentially brand new in the business. I mean, you know, you you just got started. And can I can I share a little bit about your backstory? Because I sure. love your, I <laughs> dude, let me just tell you. I love your backstory because you represent so many good people in this business that have similar s scenarios. So coach Virginia was in a relationship and let's just say it wasn't a great relationship. And there were some challenges in that relationship and that there, um, well, and I got a lot of do it's Virginia's in the chat, by the way, just so you know, <laughs> it's I think it's a I'm going to get on the, the Facebook page because I can't see the comments. Dude, they're all over here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tag you in it right now. Watch this. Virginia. Hold on. Virginia. Oh, Lord. Oh, Is I it too late to thing. get out of this podcast? I, I feel like I think my <laughs> phone's ringing, Michael. <laughs> I, think my, I think Liam has felt ill just immediately. It yeah. needs my attention. <laughs> Liam's a big, big, big kid. Tell him to rub some dirt on it and leave you alone. You're in the middle of a podcast. He'll be fine. I'm just kidding. So, so let's back, go back to your backstory. So Virginia had this bad relationship she was in. Um, and in about a, correct me if I'm wrong, in about a 60 day span, you got a divorce, lost your job, lost your place that you lived, single mom now, and were starting and had to figure out your new career. And you just got real estate licensed. Am I, am I pretty accurate so far? Yeah. Mm, uh, spouse, spouse, job, house, 90 days yeah. gone. 90 days. Yeah. Dude, that's a lot. I mean, I, th I think, I, I think Shreve, you wouldn't you agree? That's, that's a lot. That's, that's yeah. the mental health I'm talking about there. Like, <laughs> Right. Yeah. And so here's, here's what I find 
really awesome about Virginia. Most people would have probably imploded at that point. I mean, I mean, any normal human being, and it's very it would have been very acceptable and reasonable to kind of curl up in a ball for a little bit and just feel sorry for yourself and have challenges. And by the way, love the water bowl. Like the same one. Right my, this is this is my absolute favorite. <laughs> Club Wealth giveaway <laughs> of all times. This yeah, these thing. things are awesome. I love these. It also doubles as a lethal weapon. <laughs> Self-defense, right? If you can get dangerous going out meeting strangers in houses, if you have this, you are <laughs> invincible. That's hilarious. Okay, so Virginia, here's what I want to know. And, and Sharif, I want you to be asking some questions here too. So I'm going to give you some room here to do that. But what I want to know is, how'd you do it? I mean, let's back up. So at, at that time, you also, so you got into real estate and then you hired Club Wealth right away and you just launched like a rocket. For, and, I, and I can tell you, Coach Virginia, and by the way, Virginia, if you could change your name on the screen there to show what location you're in so that people want to send oh, you yeah, yeah. you can find you. Okay, I, I'll here's do what that. I'm going to tell you about Virginia. Probably the most coachable person I've ever worked with. And, and, and that is a key component here because when she came in, she says, look, I trust you guys. I'm going to do whatever you tell me to do. I'm just going to do it. I'm just going to trust you. And she, and and a lot of people say that, but you actually did it and it worked. And so before we get into that, I want to know what caused you to go from pretty much everything going wrong in your life that can go wrong or the, a lot of things going wrong in your life in, in your life at what time to you found a way to pull yourself together and, and press forward. How'd you do it? just didn't have the just didn't have an option at that point i mean that certainly helps like when you don't have a plan b you know you do whatever you need to to make plan a work um i just really you know sometimes when everything's going wrong you have to focus on something else to keep your sanity so in a way building my real estate business helped me get through all those challenges helped me give me something positive to focus on which because you could very easily spiral down the drain and and knowing that i had to be present in in real estate and show up every day even if it was just myself i didn't have a team leader i didn't have anything nobody i just had to show up for myself every day um that kind of kept me at the top of the you know from top from spiraling down um and also i you know i just really enjoyed it like even when i was in real estate school um i was probably spending the three to four hours a day in other types of learning like i was watching like your your podcast and a lot of others i you know i would just like spend a couple of hours a day on like youtube and places like that just kind of learning you know not the stuff you learn in real estate school which we know doesn't teach you really anything but learning like the real stuff you know and i went on my first listing appointment the day i got licensed i would have never even known that that was a thing to do if i hadn't been watching you and other people do these these videos on how to get listings and how to do to do so I enjoyed the, I enjoyed, I, and I still do. I enjoy the components of the industry. So when you really enjoy what you do, it's easy to di di dive into it. And once I did do it, when I, when I got that listing the day I got my license, I was like, uh, I think, I think I might like this, <laughs> right? And the more I did it, the more I started to get this feeling of like, this is what I was actually put here to be doing. You know, it took me 44 years to find it, but it was like that knowing that if I just dial into this, then I can I can actually do this. Like I always say I am, have always been mediocre, a just about everything in life, relationships, athletics, parenting, you know, everything, right? Just kind of mediocre, right? My old career, mediocre, but this is something I'm really freaking good at, right? And it's like, so it's so easy for me to pour into this and dial into this because I get so much personal satisfaction out of it. So, but you say, and I, I as you're talking about all this, I'm hearing a lot of positives, but okay, let's be real for a minute. Not everything that that happens in real estate is exciting and happy and positive and 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 you have not been without challenges in the industry. You've gone through some stuff to get to where you're at. So, so how do you, how are you handling that? How do you how do you get beyond that? And Sharif, jump in anytime, dude. I mean, but but I just I just want to I just want to throw this out there because. Everybody encounters challenges. And Virginia, I've seen firsthand a lot of the challenges that you've encountered. And, you know, we, you and I have dealt with some recent ones. And, and 
and, and I want, I'm asking you this question because I promise you there are people watching right now that are having challenges of one kind or another, and they're not sure what to do. They're not sure how to get beyond that. And that's what I'm asking you for is how, what, what did you do that got you through them that might help some of the people that are watching today? Um, well, I think there's two different things to focus on. One is like just focusing on those daily disciplines that you need to do so that at least like you have something that you can almost just do no matter, no matter what you show up for. Like for me, it's my huddle. Like no matter what else is going on in my life, yeah, I will be, I mean, unless I'm like in bed, can't even talk. And sometimes even then I'll call in, I'll be on my huddle. Right. There's, there's no reason why I ever miss my huddle. Right. So, for, and then also, you know, like pro, like having that prospecting time, like that daily discipline that you do no matter what gives you some structure and gives you almost a respite from what's going on negatively in your life. Cause it's almost like that's an escape because it's something that, you know, and that you get, per, you, you get an uplift from because it's something you can do. And then the, the other thing is just like focusing on like, why are you, why are you doing this? I mean, this business, although I love it, and I do think it's the greatest industry on earth. It's hard. Like it's really, really hard. Mm -hmm. And I think we all know that we all know that it's, it's super hard. So there has to be something else. And it's not, it's not about just about making money either. Cause I mean, I haven't, we had a, I had our, every other week team meeting today and we did our sort of our vision casting for the next one year, three years and 10 years. Mm -hmm. And one of the things I said to the team, I was like, guys, I could go be a solo agent. I have like, I'd probably make way more money than I make a team leader. Cause I'd have like a third of the expenses and I could just kind of do my own thing. Right. I was like, I'm here leading a team because I want to help other people find financial success in this industry. And I want to improve the caliber of people in this industry. And I want to pass on, like, I've been very blessed to have had the experiences I've had, meet the people that I've met, receive the training that I've received, had the, you know, just the whatever, the abundant blessings that have come on me that I sort of feel like I, like, at some point, you just got to give something back, right. And pay it and pay it forward. Um, you know, so there's that, that like, why are you here? Like, what are you building? Like what's, cause if it's just about money, if that gets old, I think mm -hmm. at some point there's only so much money, you know, and sometimes there is no money, right. Sometimes the money's not there. Right. And then it gets even harder to, to remember why it is that you're doing it. Cause you have to, if you have a reason why you're doing it, you have to do it, whether the money's there or not. Does that make that, sense? Yes, that makes tons of sense. That's huge. Go ahead, Sharif. Did you have something you wanted to ask her? No, I mean, Virginia, you talked about just like having those daily things that, you know, that you do you, you consistently, the things that you go to that you have to do daily. What does what your schedule look like then? Like, what do, what do you do on that daily? So, I, I before our huddles at, at 8.30. 8.30 in the morning. I know Michael would love it to be earlier. <laughs> oh my our, God. Huddle, our huddle is at, at 8.30 in the morning. Um, And then for me, from 8 to 8.30, I make myself available to the team for other things. Like I've just, so, I've just set up this thing where they actually have a 15 minute calendar. They can schedule 15 minutes with me between 8 and 8.30. If they want to go over a list, a CMA that they're working on, if they want help with an offer, if they want whatever, um, so that I do three, three mornings a week. And then the other two mornings a week, I just, I just do script practice with whoever my team wants to go. So basically from eight to eight 30, I'm doing general. I just make myself available to the team, right? Cause I know I'm always going to be available. I'm never going to have an appointment at eight in the morning. And then my huddles at eight 30 now before eight o'clock, then I'm doing things like, you know, social media, doing things like, you know, admin type of work, anything that I need to get out of the way before the rest of my day begins. And then at nine, just like every, all the other agents on the team should be, I'm, I'm um, getting on the phones and then I'll do that till 11 or 12, kind of depending on what, what the rest of the day looks like. I have a lot of, I do have meetings, you know, as a team leader, I do have meetings. I, I have coaching. I, I participate myself in a few masterminds a week. And um, that's usually sort of middle of the day activities. And then I try to keep my listing appointments because I do, I am still, I do still need to be in production. 
Uh, and generally, my listing appointments are scheduled at 1, 3, or 5 in the afternoon. And then I try to be done by between 6 and 7 at night. Cool. So let That's me ask you. A very loose general schedule. Of course, there's some fluctuation, but. Well, but to, to Sharif's point, I, I love that you're asking her what her specific schedule is, Sharif, because I, I believe that, as you mentioned, Virginia, that when stuff's really sucking, right? When it just, when it, when life just sucks and it's just not going the way you want it to, you still have that schedule to come back to. And you, and you know that, look, you know what? I, at least, I don't, I don't have to think about my schedule. I don't have to think about those hours. I just need to go do it. And even if I'm having a rough day, if, you know, even if things aren't going the way I want, I'm just going to go do that. And I think it, it I would love to know, and I have a feeling I have, I, 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 I believe I probably already know the answer, but, I, but you might surprise me. When you're having a bad day and you go do those things, doesn't your day just get at least a little bit better just because you just did those things? Mm -hmm. you, you, you accomplish something, right? I mean, we're all, those of us, I mean, I don't, I'm not necessarily everybody, but certainly anyone that's a team leader, like they really need to have a daily sense of accomplishment, right? In order to feel good. Like, I, I just think yeah. we feed off of that. Like that, that positive, like a sense of accomplishment is really important. Yeah. So, you know, even in the little things. 100% agree. So let me ask you this. You've been an agent for how long now? It'll be six years. Six years. At the end of end of March, yeah. And what tier are you in now? Um, four. You're in tier four now, which means you're doing between 250 and 500 transactions a year. That's no, a lot. That's, mm, no, that's five. That's five. I'm sorry, that's five. Tier four is 150 to 250. Sorry, thank you. You're right. Mm -hmm. Something I should probably know. Oops. <laughs> All right. So Sarah, Michael needs a cheat sheet for these. Oh my gosh. <laughs> what Michael, Michael needs is a cheese sandwich. I'm just throwing it out there. So anyway, um, <laughs> it's never going to happen. Anyway, you can, can't fault the guy for trying. Um, but here you are, you're doing 150 to 250 transactions a year. I got to know. And that's a lot. And I think most of the people on the call right now, would would probably say I'd love to be doing that many transactions per year, and you know the what what you're doing is what they aspire to. So I have two questions for you. Number one, is it as good as people think when they're when you're doing that volume? You know, is it, you know? So oh my gosh, I'm doing I'm at 150 and 250, and do I feel sure. like I can I can sit back and and things are going to just be fine? I could just coast and and I'm all good. So that's question number one. Oh, the, I, 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 you, you can answer that one first, then I'll answer the second one. I got to follow on. No, it's hard. It's I've never worked harder. Yeah. I always, I mean, so I think someday, hopefully it will get easier. I haven't gotten to that, that point. It's just, it's, you know, because it's not just about managing transactions. It's now managing transactions, managing staff, mm -hmm. dealing with agents and everybody needs something different and they're all at different levels right and needing to meet them where they are right yeah. um and, and what also, does that mean to you and what, also what is, meet, oh, meet clients and also you have also clients and client yeah. needs and you know yeah. so it's a lot i mean it's basically like if you're a team leader in production you basically have two overtime jobs mm -hmm. like you you're not mm -hmm. even two full-time jobs two overtime jobs to okay. to blend together it's a good point it's a good point uh okay so that, that, now i've got two more questions so the first is what does meeting them where they are mean to you well everyone on your team is going to be at a different level so they need different levels of help they also have different ways they want to receive that help some mm -hmm. people can take a really hard tough love accountability approach and they they resonate with that some people need a softer, more loving, um, nurturing approach. Um, some people need more direct information. Some people need demonstration. Some people need, I mean, therapeutic counseling. <laughs> and, you know, I mean, sometimes I feel like a, you know, a therapist as much as a team leader in some cases. Um, and there's... There's a there's a lot of them, and they, and and it's it's 
balancing that. Now, hopefully I'm lucky that I do also have staff that do help with a lot of this, right. And take, and do are able to help the agents with certain, with certain things for sure. And we, as a team, we have a full team communication platform that they help, they help each other, which is what I love about our culture. Um, But in the end, it's, you know, the buck stops with me, right? And if the team fails, it's on me. If the team's, you know, if the the team fails, it's on me. If the team succeeds, it's on them. Right. Yeah. They get the credit for it when it succeeds, but you get all the blame when it fails. That's that's the life of a team leader. Okay. So Mm -hmm. here's my other question for you. And then Sharif, you're next. You get you you get to ask the next question, but but here's here's the next question I have for you, Virginia. Have you ever wanted to just quit selling real estate? <laughs> like every day. <laughs> I, I was kind of waiting for that. I was waiting for that. Yeah, this week, like. You know, like <laughs> so, I uh, honestly. I really can't say that I have really had that. Like every once in a while, I just be like, oh, this is so much. Like it would just be so nice to really be able to unplug for a couple of days and not not regret it, you know, on Monday. Mm-hmm. Um, work, with, work with any, and you know, and in my absolute worst moments, it's across my mind for a second, but not in any, I, I can't honestly say in any sense of reality because I'm just kind of like, what, what else am I going to do? Right. Remember, I'm, I'm mediocre at everything else. So I can just continue to be really good at this or go find something else and be mediocre, you know, and who wants to do that? See, that's what I, that's one of the things I love about real estate. I think, you know, a lot, and, and there's probably a lot of people watching right now that would say, you know, yeah, you know, I just wish I could quit and just go do something else. But then I think if we get real with ourselves, I think all of us, if we really just sat back and really analyze it like you have and 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 really recognize that. Having a real estate license and doing it well is is like having a license to print cash, right? Uh, but it's hard. And, and, but that hard is fulfilling. I, I mean, it's, if it wasn't hard, it, I don't think it would be as fulfilling when we have the victories. And and I think that you know, if if it was if, if it wasn't hard, everybody be doing it. And I know it feels like everybody is doing it, but you know, really, it's only you know just a little over a million people now that are they're selling real estate. You know, a million and a half people, something like that. So it, it that sounds like a lot of people, but it's actually just a drop in the bucket in terms of population in America. And uh, and most of them aren't very good at it. And so to be really really good at it, that's something special. And uh, so anyway, appreciate that, Sharif. Go ahead. All right. Well, Virginia, a little bit about you. How many how many listings did you sign last year? Last year, I we just did these numbers. I did fifty, which is the lowest I've done in a long time. Somewhat strategically, somewhat doing a brokerage move as well. I did brokerage move last year, so. Yeah, I mean, but that's fifty listings is great. I mean, that's more than some agents do in a lifetime, right? So, mm-hmm. what are your top listing sources? Uh- so um, top listing sources would be, I would say Google, Google local services, like the Google family, right? There, a lot of it's sort of related to, a lot of it's intertwined, like it's Google and Google local services, but then it's also radio, but a lot of radio directs people back to Google. Um, we've incorporated fellow. So now from Google, they're going to our website and they're going to fellow. So it's a little incestuous and that's a little bit of a challenge right now is being like, well, what is the credit? Like, is it coming from the radio or did they just find us on Google or, you know what I mean? So, but it's that whole meld of those sort of, um, branding, but it's branding based, right? Uh, right in terms of like getting our name out there one way or another and people are searching search seeking us out and finding us that way and when people seek you out it's a much easier conversion because they're making the first move right you're not cold calling them right so that's one um and then and then i guess separate from that is this google local services because that is more of an ad based type thing but we're still i mean that has i do will say that has declined i i i i'm guessing it's declined across everywhere but you know we are seeing seeing less of that but those are always pretty solid um lead sources as well um and the yeah. next one and this wait, 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 wait. before you go to the next lead source i want to ask you about the glsa do you, have you noticed, like, is your ranking changing? Are you no longer in the top three? Or have you just seen overall there's less leads coming in from that source? Overall, there's less 
leads coming from that source. Our ranking hasn't changed. I mean, we we traditionally are always in the in the top top five. You know, it's, you know, along with two other club wealth agents in our market, <laughs> we're always three of us are usually in the top five. And every once in a while, some random people that I I have no idea why they're there will pop up. I think Google does that. I think Google every once in a while just throws somebody randomly up at the top so that they keep investing in the source. Right? That's my theory, <laughs> but. Okay, you know, so um, overall, and has he, have you seen that same decline in your other lead sources, or is it just that one has been a little bit of a decline lately? I wish I was dialed in enough to be able to answer that question. Oh, <laughs> hey, but I love, I, 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 hey, that's real. And I love that people watching can say, you know, she's not trying to make up an answer, right? Like, and it's real that she doesn't know every in and out of her business and that, and that maybe makes it okay for me to not know every single in and out of my business. And don't get me wrong. It's not for lack of trying. And it's not that you're not you know paying attention or that you don't care about your business. It's just the reality is there's so much going on in, a, in an entrepreneur's business that it's really tough to have your finger on every single aspect of the business every single day. So don't feel bad about that at all. All right. So you were going to keep going with your lead sources. Keep going. Oh, and then I know... And this one isn't a seller lead, but we, the quest, the prep didn't say specifically seller leads. But one of our best lead sources, probably more for buyers, is guess. You should know this, guys. For me, I'm going to let Sharif make the first guess. Open houses. Yeah. Open houses. I was thinking the same thing. Virginia is the queen houses. of open houses. <laughs> yeah. Dude, and open open houses. houses are killing it for everybody right now. They're just so good. Hmm. But what would you say, Virginia, what would you say to these agents? Because I know there's agents watching this right now and they're like, oh, my gosh, you guys are so old school. Why can't I just post videos on Facebook and point at stuff on TikTok? And why do we don't open houses? That's just so old school. What what would you say to that? Um, I think if you're not doing them right, then it probably doesn't work. But if you're if you're doing them right, you can actually get a lot a lot of deals from it. Like for us, it was our number, it was our number three, it's consistently our number three lead source behind Google and, and sphere of influence. Right. Mm -hmm. And what I love about number one, there's, there's, I mean, there's really like no cost. I mean, there's the cost of the listing that we're doing the open, open houses, but you don't even need, I mean, we're very fortunate. We do a fair amount of listings. So we always have abundant opportunities for our agents to do open houses, but even if you don't, you know, you can, reach out to another agent, your brokerage and do their open house or, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but so the cost is very little, there's no referral fee. Um, those people tend to be more down, down the funnel because they're not, they're not someone sitting at home wondering why you're calling them. There's they're people that actually got dressed and showered and got in their car and went to go look at a house. So they tend to be further down the, the funnel. And, and like, how, how long and how many times do you have to call a Google PPC lead or a Facebook lead or whatever, uh, or even a realtor.com lead maybe, how many times do you have to call them to get them to pick up the phone and have a conversation with you about real estate, right? And here they're just walking through the door and you're immediately at a meeting with them, you know, and you don't have to call 50 people to talk to one. You can have you can you can have one person walk through the door at an open house and transact with that person, right? Mm -hmm. So it's sometimes so I always so in the agents they do a, we have an open we we, we communicate by Discord. A lot yeah. of people probably know it, but similar to Slack, right? Yeah. So we have an open house channel where we post the open houses that we want people to do and people sign up for them, whatever. And then we ask the agents to post afterwards, like what the what the outcome is, right? Mm -hmm. And um if sometimes people say, oh, the, the, you know, the turnout wasn't super great. We got two, uh, you know, two unrep unrepresented buyers and a potential seller. And I was like, that's classic, right? Who cares <laughs> if only five people came to the open house? If you got one or two unrepresented buyers and a potential seller, like how long would it take you on the phone to get that? Yeah. Right. And then, yeah. but the problem is agents don't know what to do when they walk through the door. They don't know how to get them into my web that said the spider to the fly, right? Like, like there are specific things that you can do to entrap, not entrap them. I don't mean that in a bad way. I mean that in a good way, right? They're wandering out there aimlessly with no agent or an agent that doesn't even care enough about them to schedule a private showing that's just sending them to an open house, right? Those people need help. 
I love it. It's the Charlotte's Web approach to uh, open houses. So, okay, so hold on. So, I, first of all, I love this. And I love the conversation you're having around this, and I love how passionate you are about open houses because I think they're a great lead source. I really do. And and you know, as you know, and by the way, you've probably been to Mark Standards' class. Coach Mark teaches a an open house class at our big events, and everybody I loves it. I taught one a couple events ago. I taught my open house class too, and it's on YouTube. Dude, you need to do that again. We need to get you out there and do it again. Okay, so check this out. So Tasha asked a question. You're like, I don't know, man. I already taught that one once. You're gonna do it again. We're gonna get you to do it again. Uh but uh, Tasha says, uh, how do you get the open house notification out there to the public other than tons of signs and posting on social media? And by the way, first of all, what's wrong with a ton of signs, Tasha? Get your butt out there, put some signs up and get some posting going. Come on. Those are powerful. Oh, and she says she went to your class, by the way, uh, at uh, at the event. I don't know if it was BSM or Listing Agent Bootcamp, but uh, at one of our big events. So that's awesome, Tasha. It was two so, events ago. Yeah. Um, yeah. So uh, signage, right? I mean, yeah. it's critical. It's critical. We have, you know, a ton, I mean, 100, 200, whatever open house signs. Um, and Wait, hold on. You don't put 200 signs out for one open house. No, no, no. no. Okay. How many, no, no, how many no, no. do you put out for each open house? Well, our goal is 25. Okay. If I'm, I can't guarantee that it not always gets there, but that's our that's our goal is 25, and we and we always try to keep in very high traffic areas. And our signs are really catchy; like they look kind of like a real estate sign. Like all my real estate signs have my photo on them. Well, the open house signs have a photo on them too, because people are more likely to see them if they have a human image on them. And that's one of the greatest things I learned from you, Michael, is put your photo on your sign. Um, and by the way, hold on. Side note. Side note. One of the things I love most about you is that when when you started having even just a little bit of success and you started actually having success very quickly, you had enough signs that your ex-husband to get from his home to work had to see your signs all the way to work. And then all the way back, you had signs put up and all these signs. So all, everywhere he goes, he's seeing all the success that you're having and it's your face on all the signs. Best thing ever. I love that. Yeah, was- I had multiple directionals out on those five and after the listing closed, I would leave the directional. I take the house sign up, but I would just leave the directionals until, you know, until they got. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I love it. I think that's great branding. I, I just, I absolutely love it. Okay. So back to open houses. Uh, we'll get back to retribution for. Wait, wait, wait. Can later. I tell you that? I want to share this a little bit personal, <laughs> a little personal. And you guys are going to be hysterical. I can't believe I'm going to share this. I right? can't wait to hear it. I'm, oh I'm on the edge of my seat, literally. <laughs> But I'm kind of, I'm kind of feeling quirky right now. So, <laughs> so I'm I, I'm on a, a dating app and I don't have my real name, right? And someone messaged me and said, "Hey, aren't you that real estate chick on all those billboards? Billboards, <laughs> billboards. <laughs> They're just my real estate signs." And I said, "Yes, I am. Do you need to buy or sell a home?" <laughs> nice. so I'm going for the kill. Billboards. Swipe oh, left if you need to buy somewhere. a home. Swipe right if you need to, to sell a home. We're good to go. It's a match. <laughs> That's so, cool. so, um, so oh, open house. So signage. Yeah, we we do post on. We do a lot of posting on social media. We email our database too every week of our new listings and open houses. I mean, we and we have a pretty sizable uh, database that we're sending to. Um, yeah, I mean, those are really those are really the main ways. I mean, I feel like right now inventory is so low. People are are just jonesing to get to a an open house, right? I, I struggle with, you know, the whole put up less signs thing. Like at the end of the day, guys, like you can't go wrong putting more signs up. Like I, I would say 50 signs would be phenomenal. And and by the way, in a lot of markets now, there are services that you can pay someone else to put the signs up and take them down after your open house. I don't know if that exists in all the neighborhoods that you guys are doing business in, but. We we actually have someone who's a sign installer, and a lot of times we have him do it. And in fact, we've joked about starting a sign installation company because there isn't really one in our market. Since we have such a need for sign, and it's hard to it's hard to find someone that will just come and work for you for fifteen hours a week to put signs out. So yeah. we have a lot of turnover. But we're like, maybe we should just find some people full time and you know source them out to others. But it's a great move. We'll see. We'll see. It's a great move. Absolutely. Go ahead, Sharif. You look like you had another question. I, I, 
No, I mean, I, I heard Virginia's basically saying your top lead sources are sphere, uh, brand recognition. I think we can combine all the rest into that. And then also the leads that you're getting off your listings, which like open houses, sign calls, things of that nature, right? Now, yeah, we do. I mean, we do. Yeah, we just get a ton of direct calls, honestly, off of listings. Right. I mean, we do too. That's it. Surprisingly, that is our top lead sources too. Um, Wait, exactly in that order. In what order? So it's sphere and then brand recognition and then the leads off of our listings. Now, when you say brand recognition, what do you mean brand recognition? Like your Google presence, um, you know, the, what you can't really calculate coming directly in is what it comes down to. But mostly coming through your website and Google is where that's funneling to you. Okay. Right? Virginia, I would, I would imagine it's pretty much and phone calls coming in. Yes. Yep. That makes sense. Um, but now with that being said, how are you using AI to leverage your business? Well, probably not as much as you are, Mr. <laughs> this is what you asked me at our little podcast we that did on is, the last, was it the PSM? So I figured is. I'd return the favor. <laughs> yes. I mean, well, we're, I mean, we're using AI in the, you know, the traditional way that I think most people are in like content creation you know, like writing listing de descriptions, you know, that, that, that sort of thing. Um, were you, we were using, we had played around with AI <laughs> for a video production as well. We have kind of experimented with that, um, you know, sending, sending raw footage into a, you know, a, a Opus I IO. So we've done a little bit of that. We're finding we have someone. Actually, I think it's the guy you and you and Peter. Do you, you and Peter use the same guy? Yep. Yeah, we we've since we've <laughs> since hired him. So we just figured it's it's almost just better to use him to do videos. So we've yeah. just actually he just we just used him for the first time. He's the one that did. I don't know if you saw the Ryan Searhan B roll thing that I did. He oh, threw great. that. He put that together from just stuff that I just took on my phone. Um, but those are the main ways. I mean, honestly, like that is something that I feel. Like I know other ways we could be using AI. It's just, it's just again, it's in finding the time to start implementing all of these things that we're constantly learning, learning about is is while being in production, while running a team, while keeping the lights on, while managing expenses, you know, there's, you know, it's just, it's a it's a future thing. But the thing is, it's like we're like on the cusp of AI everywhere. So now is really the best time to kind of latch onto it and start finding ways to to build it out. But that's a class that Sharif might teach. I did. <laughs> at a, at a, again, again. I did at the last because time. you know, but seriously though, that's something that like probably every year you could teach it because you're probably going to be doing something else, right? There's but that's something that's always going to be yeah. changing, like what you're doing in AI. Yeah, it's evolving. It's still in its infancy, really. So. Uh, Shreve, still... we should talk. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, no, no. We should talk about having you do that at uh, at Listing Agent Bootcamp. Do another... think... Don't worry, Ron already reached out yesterday. Did he reach out? Good. Okay. <laughs> so we're <laughs> literally as we speak. And what I need to do is I need to get you dialed in with Black Hat and with Perfect ISA, so you can really understand what we're doing with those and uh, be able to speak articulately on those because they're they're crushing it right now. I mean, it's it's interesting how. You know, we for the first few months as we were using the AI, we were working really hard to get the AI to be as good as our VAs in the Philippines, you know, our ISAs in the Philippines. Uh, and we and it was and it was it took us a while to get that point. And then we got it to be not only as good, but we got it to be about the same cost as a as an ISA in the Philippines. And so now we've got just as good, same about the same cost. And now it's improving even more. So now I, and I, I just, I think there's going to come a time where it's going to be like, why would I hire a, an entry level ISA in the Philippines when I can have my AI do it for less money? It's more effective. I don't have to deal with the drama. I don't have to deal with all the stuff surrounded having employees, especially employees overseas. And I certainly can't touch those numbers with an ISA locally. I mean, it's not even close. And so I think that that's happening right now. And and so it's really interesting to see what's happening in that space. Um, you know, we were talking on the coaches call earlier today about um, how AI is really starting to also impact transaction coordination and how we're seeing uh, on the back end of the business, how AI is playing a much bigger role in every aspect of the business. And so I'm, I'm excited about it. I, I'm also scared 
I don't know about you guys. I don't know if you get, do you guys share Elon Musk's fear of AI at all? I mean, I, are you, do you think we're going to see Terminator salvation come around? Like, are we, is it going to be that bad someday? I mean, are we, what, what do you guys think? Is it, is well, it getting uh, possible? That's why you should always say please when asking chat GPT anything. Uh, so <laughs> prepare right? for it, but yeah, I mean, it's getting smart out there. Um, but I mean, even, even using it for ISAs, I mean, using ISAs themselves, Virginia, um, are you using ISAs to leverage your business? We don't have ISAs. We do have a we do have a nice uh, a nice group of VAs helping us, but not ISAs. Gotcha. Well, hold on. So okay, so you don't use any callers. You're just using administrative VAs, right? Yeah. Um, and so that's interesting. So your agents are feel are, are handling the the load of the phone calls themselves. Yes. Yeah. Yep. 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 I like that. I like that. That's awesome. And so how many VAs do you have and what do they do? We have four. Four VAs. And what do you, what are they doing for you? What types of tasks are they doing for you? Well, it's a, um, it's a expanding role. Uh, two of them we just hired two weeks ago. One we hired maybe a few months ago. And then one we've had, for, one has been with us. Joyce has been with us for several years. Um, we had some shifts in our, um, in like in-house employees, right? Like one of my very, very cherished employees got an opportunity to go train to be an EMT, which was his, you know, kind of lifelong goal. So, you know, as sad as I was to let him go, I was really, really, really happy for him. Um, so he did a lot of database management, stuff like that. So VAs are picking up like database management, marketing, canvas. I, one of the VAs, she handles all of the listings. She's like a listing coordinator in terms of, you know, putting it in the MLS, putting the photos, setting up the showing time, you know, all that kind of, you know, coordinating offers when they come in. So she kind of manages, manages that. Um, really we're trying to take as much, I have, so right now I have two full-time employees in the States and the goal is to just take as much of the administrative work off of them so they can do higher level stuff. Even like when I do one-on-ones with the team, I like to go in with a, with a sheet for each team member of like, you know, what their transaction, what their what their movement was in the last 30 days and et cetera, et cetera. Well, someone's got to look that up and create that, right? That's something a, a VA can do. And so um, I've always, you know, when I've had different levels of staffing, you know, I've gone from having no staff to having one part-time assistant to having like a full-time person and a part-time person and then adding VAs and then recruiting, you know, whatever. I've always tried to think like myself, like, do I actually need to do this? Or can I hire someone to do this so that I can go do other things? And then I ask that person, right? Do you need to do this, or can this go to someone else, or can this go to a, a, a you know, a virtual assistant or something like that? And that's the, and it's it's hard to do that because we kind of like like to hold on to things, right? Because we're sure no one can do it, you know, as good as us, right? But it's the only way that we're free to go do higher level things and, and is to be able to keep not passing the buck, but um, uh, delegate and elevate, right? You delegate work, you elevate yourself, right? And I remember the funny story was this it was for me, it was like I was back, I don't know, probably a year and maybe a year, year and a half in business. And I was, I think I was a sign installer, right? So I'd be out there putting my signs in and like sometimes I would do these funny Facebook posts. I'd be in like a business suit and stilettos with like a sledgehammer, like putting signs in the ground. And then I remember one day I was on the main drag, right? And people were driving past me. People were like honking and I'm putting a sign in the ground. And I was like, you know what? I make way too much freaking money to be putting my own signs in the ground. I was like, I am hiring a sign installer. And I don't think I've ever put it. I don't think I've put a sign in the ground since. But then I was like, why am I doing this? Why am I spending like an hour between driving and putting it in and breaking a fingernail and you know what I mean? Ruining my shoes or whatever to do that. Like I could just be doing so much more an hour just calling expireds or whatever okay. I was doing back then, right? That was not highest and best use of, of, of my time, right? And I think we always need as business owners, as agents, whatever, if, if we're not getting paid by somebody else, right? You know, if we have to go out and, and you know, eat what we kill, like we need to make sure that we're always highest and best use of our time. And it, it honestly, it's even at a, even at a lower, like even when you're not producing a ton, there may still be things 
that you can alleviate. I mean, I hired a part-time assistant. I, I was eight months into the business. I had sold like eight houses. So right? I love this conversation and, and I agree with you hundred percent. I really do. The concern that I have is there's two, there's two types of people watching this call right now. There's people that need to delegate more. Uh, right. And, and again, you're, you're, you're always looking to how can I eliminate myself in this role? How can I make me unnecessary? Right. Uh, you know, we've done a really nice job of that with club wealth because the coaches know more than I do. Right. And so, you know, I've got all these really, really smart people around me that can do this much better than I can. That works really well for my business. So you want to be able to do that in your business too. The problem comes at about tier four and five, right in between tiers four and five, Right, and you're like right where you're at right now, right? And so, but this is where the problem goes because what happens is everybody wants to get out of production, and and man, I tell you, if I had a nickel for everybody that I saw that you know when they get out of production, their team implodes and and they implode, and it's just it's such it, it as much as I want to say yes, you need to replace yourself, and I want you to continue to do that in as many of these tasks as you can the hardest thing to do is replace yourself as the leader of the team and the backbone of the team. And that's, that is, that's something that generally doesn't go well unless you're in at least tier five or six, right? Uh, Robert Slack successfully made that transition. He's had, you know, but he was doing, you know, he was doing over 6,000 transactions a year when he made that transition. <laughs> right. And so, but he did it and he's, and he's no longer active in his business and his business is growing without his presence. Now that's, it's one thing, you know, because I think a lot of people think, well, if I could just get it working and continue to do what it does without my presence, that'd be great. The reality is you have to have it growing without your presence for you to really be able to get out of production because it's always going backwards if you're not growing it. So, um, and I just, I throw that out there because I think there's a lot of people watching that, you know, for some of them, it's, they, they won't let things go, right? Was that hard for you at first? Did you ever have, did you have a hard time delegating at first? I mean, not certain things. I mean, some things, yes, but other things I gratefully, you know, gratefully delegated, right? Mm -hmm. I didn't, you know, certain, certain things like, and, and what I did, like I, like I said, I'd sold like eight houses. I hired an assistant. It was like that first, after that first eight months, I was an agent from like end of March to the end of the year. So like eight houses right then there. And I hired an assistant and then I sold 42 and then I hired a full-time assistant next year and then I sold 85. So the, I think the challenge is, is people, they offload that stuff and then they don't replace it with money-making activities. And they go, they go, they replace it with like, I don't know, fun, fun, fun right? Yes. But that, that doesn't work. Then, then you go backwards, right? You have to, you have to take the time that you're saving and go do something great with it. And that's mm -hmm. the only way you keep, then, then your staff never is a cost. It's always an investment. So first of all, I love that you just said that, but here's the question I have, because there's got to be somebody watching this right now saying to themselves, but when do I get to take a step back? When do I get to relax? When do I get to take my foot off the gas? What would you, I, I want to know what both of you would say to that. I'm, I'm, I'm just going to sit back and relax for this one because I'm, I'm very anxious to hear this. I don't think you ever. Um. I think you do at some point. I don't think I'm there yet because I'm right. I just don't think I'm there yet. But I I do see people that 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 do and are able to and have and that doesn't mean you're not working. But I mean, and I've gotten pretty good. Like I'm pretty weekend free, right? If I if I am working on weekends, it's stuff that maybe it's like a more administrative, like CEO type stuff that I need to do, right? Um, and my evenings are usually pretty free, except unless I need to do more of that stuff. Um, but I definitely have like, you know, Coach Donnie, he's pretty much out of production. He He's, you know, pretty, I feel like he feels like he has a good quality of life. And, you know, Jason, I know with Jason Lash, like having to get to his kids' sporting events and stuff was important to him. So, you know, there definitely are people that we can see that are, that have done that or, and, are, and are doing that. Um, but you know, especially as a team leader, you have a lot invested financially and emotionally, logistically, psychologically in the success of that team. So you've got to stay dialed in. Well, and that's, I think, 
Well, part of the problem is that when team leaders get disconnected, the culture of the team changes. And, and that's what you got to really watch out for. Now you talk about Donnie and Jason. Donnie's got 60 agents on his team, right? And, and I think, you know, somebody, and there's agents that are out there probably watching this. They're thinking, well, I've got 10 or 15 agents on my team. I'm going to get out of production. Big mistake, right? Like that's, that is <laughs> not a good move. And Jason, by the way, is back in production now. And, yeah, I know. And, so he got out of production and it hurt him and he got back into production and, and rebuilt everything and got it built back, you know, back to where it's really doing very, very well now again. Um, and you know, Kelly Lidke, very, you know, very exact same thing, right? Another amazing agent that got out of production for a period of time and it, had, it really hurt her and she had to go back and rebuild from the ground up again. And she did and came back stronger the second time, but I, I guess the lesson there is just if you're going to get out of production, you got to make sure you're ready. You got to, mm-hmm. you got to make sure. And more importantly, you got to make sure your business is ready for you to get out of production. So, okay, good stuff. We've only got a few minutes left. Sharif, what other questions do we have for Virginia? And then Virginia, I think you may have a question or two for me. So let's, let's start um, with these questions for Virginia. All right. So Virginia for an agent that's struggling right now, and thinking about, you know, getting out of the business, what would be your top recommendation? To find a good team. Uh, I mean, you find, you find a good team, all of a sudden, all of your obstacles go away. Mm-hmm. Right? You no longer have financial concern. I mean, you don't need finances anymore in terms of your business, right? Because that should be taken by the team. You should be getting leads. You should be getting coaching. You should be getting accountability. You need, you know, like that's the whole, that's the whole point of, I mean, at least the teams and the team structures that I know, like that's, and I, and I always kind of say, like, I was like, before you tap out, I want to be your last stop before you tap out, right? Yep. Before you tap out, come see me, <laughs> right? That's smart. <clears throat> so, you know, it's just, it's, it's, I mean, I think new agents, I think new agents should start on a team <clears throat> and that's why. You know, with the, the housing wires had the report, 70% of agents sell less than five homes a year in the country, right? Yeah. 20% of agents do 80 to 90% of the transactions, right? Mm-hmm. 90% of people don't renew their license after two years or something crazy like that. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's because let's face it, you go to real estate school, you graduate, you know, nothing, you know, nothing about real estate. And I think and I, I actually, I have, I do these career nights and I mean, I'm like super harsh on them, not on them, but I'm like, I like crush all their fake uh, envisions of real estate real quick, you know, because it's, it's, what's the point if they're coming into this, I was like, with thinking it's going to be sunshine and rainbows and going out for coffee and selling houses. Like I, 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 I couldn't even take someone on the, t- I couldn't even like encourage someone under those false pretenses, it it would be wrong, right? So I'm very upfront with what is going to be expected and what it really takes. And that, yeah, you want to be a full-time real estate agent. Yeah, It's a 60 hour week from the get go, right? Don't think you're doing anything less than that. I Um, love that you said that. I just had a similar conversation with a gal yesterday and and, and I, I liked her response to it, but I think there's so much delusion out there right now about, you know, people thinking I'm going to get into real estate, make all this money and not have to work hard. Oh my gosh. Killing me. I would say it's like the Peace Corps. It's the toughest job you ever love. There you go. Yeah. I like that. I I would agree with that. All right. Good stuff. So Virginia, you've got some questions for us. Let's see what you got. Well, I don't want for Sharif because I didn't know Sharif was going to be on. (laughs) I have a question for you, Michael. Michael. If you could wave your magic wand and immediately change anything you wanted about the real estate industry, what would that be? It's a great question. I really like the industry and I don't, and this is going to sound crazy. There's not a lot that I would change about it right now. I, I really like the industry and I think I, I like the environment. I like the, I like the landscape and I like the opportunity that it provides. Um, I would love, and I think it's happening right now because of the lawsuits, I would love to see greater professionalism in our industry. 
And I think that's coming. I think that you're going to see everybody have to use buyer agency agreements uh, in you know coming months. Uh, I don't even think it's years down the road. I think it's months down the road. And um, and I think that's going to be a, a great thing for the industry. Um, other than that, I just I, I think I would just like to see the people that are in it take it more seriously. I mean, that's really it. If if the people that are in it would take it more seriously, you know, so less casual agents, more professional agents, I, I guess is what I'd say. I think that that would help. I think that would serve the industry as a whole. I think it would serve the public. Um, and, and certainly it would serve the industry. I'm sorry, the, sorry, the individual agent as well. So yeah, that'd be it. That'd be why I'd change. I want to know, Sharif, what would you do? And so same question for you. What would you change? What would I change about the industry? I mean, I think yeah. all, all the points that you brought up were great. Um, but I, I think it really comes down to, you know, just what agents are given when they initially were the lack of what they're given uh, when they first join the industry. If I could change that, just maybe in school, maybe they're taught something a little bit more uh, about how, how to actually transact. I think that would be a great change than knowing just about the laws that, you know, you don't really deal with that on a day to day basis. I think. That would be a great positive change for the industry. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. All right. Virginia, do you have any more questions for us? Um, uh, yeah. Hold on. Let me see how much time we have. We have four minutes. Go for it. Hit us. What do you got? Pat Michael, because I know, I know you're, I know this, you have had this. How do you, you kind of asked me this, how do you handle burnout? How do you avoid burnout? What do you do when you, when you struggle? So I'm going to say my I've got two backstops. My first backstop is my wife. And what I mean by that is she doesn't let me fail and she won't let me stop. She won't let me quit. Um, and so when I'm feeling sorry for myself, the, the very one of the greatest things in my life is that she just comes to me and she just says, well, what are you going to do? Are you going to sit here and feel sorry for yourself? You're going to go do something about it. And, and she's just very real with me. I mean, you know, Tara, she's, She's just very real with me and, and, and she loves me in spite of it. Right. Like she's so, so, you know, give me a hug and a kiss and tell me she loves me. And, and she'll say things like, you know, we're going to get through this. Um, and she'll remind me that this too shall pass. Uh, you know, that's, and she, she always is the first one to tell me that and she's right. Um, and then the, the other thing is that I just, I, it's, I, I just revert back to the basics and whenever I'm really despondent or things have gotten really tough or I'm not sure what to do, I just get back to the basics and it doesn't matter. It, it, I, I don't know if they're going to work right away. They may or may not work right away, but I know that they'll always work long-term. So if I just get back to the basics, I do enough of it on a consistent basis, things will get better. Um, and what else can I do? Right. I mean, if everything falls apart, I mean, and this again, it comes back to, you know, we, Sharif and I were talking about uh, the one, the one thing uh, or there's the power of one more by Ed Milet. And I was listening to that in the car with Tara and Ron on the way back from the gym this morning. And he was talking about not living the past and not, and, and to focus on the future. Don't live in the past, focus on the future and be present in the moment. And I know that sounds cliche, but the reality is that we can't change what's happened. We can't control certain things. I don't control who gets elected. I don't control what the economy does. I don't control what real estate does. I can just control what I do every day. And and if I go broke, I go broke, and then I'll just figure it out then, right? Like if 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 catastrophe happens and I lose everything tomorrow, well, okay, but I'm not going to waste my day today worrying about maybe losing everything tomorrow. I'm just going to do what I got to do today. And let the consequence follow, right? It comes back to, you know, back in Sunday school. I think you and I had this conversation the other day where, you know, in Sunday school, they teach you, you know, choose the right and let the consequence follow. And that's that's pretty much all you can do. So I don't, that's not a very sexy answer, but that's what I do. <laughs> so, but it's a great question. I appreciate the question. Mm -hmm. So any, any other questions? You got, did, I can't remember. Did you have three or did you just have the two? Um, I have one more, but we're at three, but I think my time is up. Let's let's give you one more. Let's let's okay. let's do one more. My right time now. was up an hour ago. So. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's because you didn't have you you that's because you didn't have a two o'clock appointment scheduled. <laughs> oh, okay, we'll do it fast. Go fast, go quick. No, no, no. What major changes will have the most impact, good or bad, in 2024? 
Oh, uh, that's the, 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 that's easy. There's, there's the lawsuits are certainly going to have big impact. I think it's going to be a positive. I think everybody thinks it's going to be negative, but I think it's actually going to be positive because I think it's going to raise the professionalism in the industry. That's, that's the first thing. Uh, the other one's AI. Uh, AI is going to change real estate period forever. Uh, just like CRMs did, um, just like, uh, the MLS changed it, right? We went from books to online on the internet and, you know, I mean, it's just, Technology is changing our business in, in, I think, very good ways. I think that AI, I think there's a lot of people that think that they need to worry about AI and that it's going to do away with the agents and, you know, some, you know, that's, you know, well, there's going to be AI buyer agents and all this. I'm not worried about that. I, I, I'm not worried about that. I'm really not. I, I think that, um, I think the technology for those that learn to embrace it and that get in front of it, it's going to be a big benefit and it's going to help those that utilize it properly. And I think that those that fail to utilize it properly are going to go out of business like Blockbuster. Um, you know, but what did McDonald's do when the minimum wage went to $15 an hour in Seattle was the first thing they did. They went out and they put kiosks in and guess what? McDonald's is still here. Uh, you know, what did Amazon, what did Amazon do? They, they went out and they created Amazon go, put your hand over the little thing. You walk in, you grab whatever groceries you want. You walk out, you don't even talk to a person, you know, and if you forget something, you go back in, you grab that. It just knows what you have. There's no checkout process. It just knows that's where the world's headed. And, and I think that the real estate industry is going to be very similar to that, but, it, but I'm a firm believer. And this is, the, and, and this is the last, last thing I'll share with you is I, I, I feel like I'm a real believer that people want that trusted advisor. They, they are, they're going to continue to want an expert in their corner that really knows the ins and outs and that's going to take care of them and ensure that this largest financial transaction of their lives goes the way they envisioned. And I don't think they're going to trust that to technology. I, th I think that they're going to trust the human element there more than technology, uh, like they have everything else that technology has tried to replace. Um, or I should say, you know, anything, anything major, you know, you look at the travel agents, even, you know, everybody thought they were going to go out of business. No, there's still travel agents out there. And some of them are doing, uh, you know, the ones that are good are doing better now than they did when there was 10 million travel agents out there. So I'm very optimistic about that. And I'm very optimistic about this year. So that said, I want to give you the final say, Coach Virginia. What would you like to share with the world right now? First, so share it with us and then tell us how they can reach you. What do you mean? What do I want to share with the world? What have I we not talked about yet today that you want to make, get out there, that you want to share, that you want to make sure they come away from today with? Um, I think is always like we, we, we've all built something here. Like you've all had like great years and, and, and everything else. And I think the thing, I think sometimes people can get stuck in fear and panic and doubt when things start to not all of a sudden they're not doing as well. But I think the thing I always remember, and even Donnie said this to me, he was like, you know what, if it was everything tomorrow, look, look, less than six years ago, I knew nothing. I didn't even know anything about doing real estate. And I still did 42 transactions, right? Like, if it all were to like go to pot and, you know, we would figure it out. The people that are surviving in this industry, they're going to survive even if they have to rebuild. I mean, like you talk about Kelly Lickie, she's like the queen of like, you know, from starting over and rebuilding, yeah. but it's, it can be done. Right. And so I think that's, I think that can help free you from some anxiety. Cause I think there's a lot of anxiety in the market right now with people. Um, I do think, you know, 2024 is definitely going to be a turnaround year uh, for those of us that are still, are still here. And, you know, I, this is something else I, I said to the team today. I was like, guess what? There are fewer, and you say this all the time, there are fewer agents out, out there, right? Who's, which one of you are going to get their transactions? Mm -hmm. Which one of you are going to get the transactions that would have gone to someone who is no longer in the business? Are you going to get it or is somebody else going to get it? Which are you going to take that open market share or is someone else going to do it? And just ask yourself, do I want that or am I going to give this up? So um, in terms of reaching me, you can find me on, I don't know, Facebook, Google, you know, just <laughs> anywhere. Like, it's pretty hard not to be able to find me if you know my name. Um, I am in the Hudson Valley. We cover, you know, eight counties north of New York City and north of New Jersey. So we are we are right north of like Peter and Sharif and those guys there. And um, that's it. I love it. 
thank you so much for doing this with us. And and so both of you, I really enjoyed the conversations with both of you today. Uh, certainly, we're going to take advantage of chopping this up into a bunch of short little reels and reposting it as, as short form content. Also, guys, uh, those of you that are watching, please give us a follow, share this, comment, uh, you know, tell us what you thought. And by the way, don't forget, if you want Virginia and Sharif to do their own podcast, type in... <laughs> Do the podcast in the chat so these guys get the message that you would like them to have a regular podcast uh, because they got a lot to share. And, and frankly, I think we can all learn a lot from both of them. Go ahead, Virginia. Just say one more thing. In case there are yeah. agents that are in in my market, I am, people always ask me, I am always recruiting to build a team. Um, we usually have a new class that starts every month. Our next onboarding class starts is scheduled to start February 5th. And I'd love to connect with anyone who wants to learn more about what we're doing. I love it. That's great. Awesome stuff. Yes. All right. Good stuff. Sharif, anything to add before we wrap up? No, same thing. Thanks. Thanks for having us, Michael. Uh, it was a pleasure. Thank you. Definitely. And thanks for, thanks for, Sharif, thanks for not leaving me alone with Michael. On this. <laughs> I did this for you. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate you. I owe you one. Oh my gosh. Dude, you guys are starting to sound like Omar. Give me a freaking <laughs> break. Oh, my gosh. All no right, guys. Have an awesome day. Thanks for being on Club Ball TV today, everybody. We'll see you next time. Take care. 87%. Yeah, that's the percentage of all real estate agents that get in the business today that'll be gone in two years. Let me tell you something. The why is there so much turnover in real estate? Because it isn't easy. And because most people don't know exactly what they need to do to get to the next level. Now look, regardless of whether you're brand new to the industry or, you've, or you're a team leader, you've got 40 people on your team and you just wanna to get to the next level. If you're doing 10 transactions a year, you wanna to get to 25. You're doing 500 transactions a year, you wanna to get to 1,000. You're at 1,000, you wanna to get to 10,000. Let me tell you something, you need the right coach. Why? Because Club Wealth is the only coaching company on the planet that will literally guarantee that you will double your income or make at least an extra $100,000 your first year coaching with us, or we will give you 100% of your investment back. This is for people of all levels. Click the link below, sign up for the appropriate tier level, and let's get you a strategy session today. And I promise you, I 100% guarantee you, promise you, that you will walk away with a heart full of gratitude for the time that we took for you because you got so much value out of that call. Schedule your strategy session today. I promise you'll be glad you did. Sign up for a strategy session at clubwealth.com slash strategy session.